The EA-6B Prowler has a perfect combat record, dating back to its first deployments in 1970 during the Vietnam War and continuing through the present War on Terror. The EA-6B Prowler Electronic Warfare aircraft blasted overhead in its two triumphant and final flybys, bidding a heartbreaking farewell to the skies it adorned over its years of service to this country. Today's video will go through this history, armament, and stick around until the end when we'll discuss its replacement, the EA-18G Growler. The EA-6B's combat skills have kept it out of the reach of the enemy weaponry in all of its forms from Vietnam through Operation El Dorado Canyon in Libya, the first Gulf War, and beyond. Few airplanes with such a long lifespan can make the same claim. The death gestures of Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 2 departed Al Udaid Air Station in Qatar in early November 2018 and returned to their home base of Marine Corps Air Station, Cherry Point, North Carolina. The 250 Marines were not relieved to be back home after a long deployment, but they were also delighted to have finished the last act of deployment of the EA-6B Prowler electronic warfare aircraft. History During the Cold War, anti-aircraft defense became more advanced with radars detecting attacking aircraft and guiding anti-air weaponry and surface-to-air missiles. The Navy and Marine Corps converted aircraft particularly the AD Sky Raider and F3D Sky Knight, to tackle the developing danger for Electronic Countermeasure Missions, or ECMs. Grumman engineers began testing an ECM variant of the A2F, later A6, intruder all-weather attacker aircraft in 1960 as part of the construction of the modern A2F, or later A6, intruder all-weather attack aircraft. The result was the EA-6A intruder which was deployed to Marine Corps units in December 1965. Just as the air battle over North Vietnam intensified during Operation Rolling Thunder, Grumman was also working on tactical jamming systems and defining the criteria for the plane that would be used as a platform for it. The result was the EA-6B Prowler, which drew on the success of the EA-6A but had several differences, such as a four-man crew comprising of one pilot and three electronic countermeasure officers. During its service life, the Prowler was modified to incorporate better equipment that increased its warfighting capability. This includes plans to fire high-speed anti-radiation missiles, or HARM missiles. The EA-6B was developed with the help of three A6As. The first EA-6B was delivered to the Navy in January 1971 at NAS Whidbey Island, Washington and deployed to Vietnam in 1972. In 1973, the standard version of the plane was replaced with the Extended Capabilities version, which increased the ECM system's frequency coverage. Since then, it has shown its military capability in joint strikes on Libyan terrorist targets in 1986, Operation Desert Storm in Bosnia-Herzegovina, Kosovo, and Operation Iraqi Freedom. The EA-6B Prowler was built by Northrop Grumman Aerospace Corporation and went into service with several improvements throughout the years. Its objective satisfied the demand for a specialized electronic warfare aircraft capable of providing a tactically survivable electronic countermeasure curtain for strike aircraft. Until 1991, a total of 170 EA-6Bs were constructed. The EA-6B's jamming capability and capacity have been gradually improved since 1973, thanks to the EXCAP, Extended Capability Effort. Since 1995, the EA-6B has had the capacity to neutralize the danger presented by enemy SAM installations with more direct techniques. EA-6B Prowler The EA-6B Prowler is a twin-engine airplane with a mid-wing design. The electronic warfare equipment is housed in a bigger pod at the top of the tail fin, and the Prowler has a longer nose with a larger cockpit portion with two canopies to accommodate the pilot and mission crew. For the larger aircraft, the under fuselage structure was strengthened in the region of the A-frame arrestor hook and landing gear to resist carrier landings. In the cockpit of an EA-6B, a pilot and three electronic countermeasure officers serve as the aircraft's crew. The pilot is located on the port side of the cockpit, and one ECM officer station is equipped with communications, navigation systems, and defensive electronic countermeasures, including decoy dispensers. 
two ECM officers, and the ALQ-99 control and display stations are housed in the rear cockpit. While its primary duty is electronic warfare, which is critical on any modern battlefield, the EA-6B can also use its attack aircraft history to deliver a powerful punch when necessary. Anti-radiation operations, which use aircraft to attack and demolish enemy radar installations or radar, are the most prevalent variation of this. When combined with the EA-6B's capacity to identify and follow enemy signals, it becomes an even more powerful weapon. The Raytheon Harm High-Speed Anti-Radiation Missile AGM-88, is mounted atop the Prowler. The Harm missile is designed to take out radar-guided air defense artillery and surface-to-air missile systems on land and at sea. Harm has a range of more than 90 kilometers or 80 miles. Isn't that crazy? When it comes to countermeasures, the Prowler is the best player in the game. The ALQ-99 is a tactical jammer that covers a wide variety of overlapping frequency bands, from VHF to 10 GHz KU. The US Navy and Air Force back the development of the ALQ-99. The system's development and manufacturing were handled by a number of different contractors. The exciters and encoders were created by AIL Systems, while AEL Defense Corporation produced the Band 9 and Band 10 transmitters and the transmitters and exciters were developed by Northrop Grumman, previously Litton Systems. The ALQ-99 pods are carried by the Prowler in five locations, two under each wing and one beneath the fuselage. Each pod is equipped with two strong continuous wave transmitters that employ beam steering to target the jamming signal at the danger. The jamming signal characteristics are tailored by an exciter in the pod, each pod contains a control computer that communicates with the aircraft's ALQ-99 central processing unit. The CPU interprets danger signals, supervises jamming operations, and provides data for the crew to see. Data about the characteristics of the emitters that hostile forces might use and downloaded into threat library on the CPU before the mission. Using signal matching methods, the CPU compares the parameters of identified danger signals to the threat library. Threats are discovered, located, and prioritized, and the CPU advises on how to respond or automatically route signals to the target area and start the jamming sequence. The receivers are set up to provide the Prowler with 360-degree coverage. The reception antennas for Band 1 and 2 VHF and VHF UHF are housed in blister fairings on both sides of the tail fin. Higher frequency receiving antennae systems are housed in the fin top blister fairing. At its peak, the EA-6B had four Marine squadrons and 14 active duty Navy squadrons, plus one training and two reserve squadrons. Prowler squadrons aboard carriers normally deploy four to six aircraft. The Marine squadrons deployed six during their most recent land deployments. Several Navy squadrons were classified as expeditionary, indicating they were designed for advanced deployment to onshore air stations rather than carrier air wings. This was to compensate for the Air Force's EF-111's retirement, leaving the Prowler as the only tactical EW aircraft in the entire US arsenal. Engine The plane is powered by two 50KN Pratt & Whitney J-52 P-408 turbojet engines. The airplane has a maximum internal fuel capacity of 7,000 kilograms and can carry an additional 4,500 kilograms in fuel pods externally. The aircraft's unrefueled range on internal fuel is 1,800 kilometers. A refueling probe is installed in front of the cockpit for in-flight refueling. The plane flies at 775 kilometers per hour and reaches a maximum height of 12,550 meters. EA-6B Retirement of the Prowler The Marine Corps' last Prowler flew for the last time on March 14, 2019. The aircraft was flown from Cherry Point, North Carolina, to the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum by four men from Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 2. As a tribute to history, the team took a detour over the Northrop Grumman facility in Bethpage, New York, where the plane was produced. When the plane reached the air museum gates and taxied through an arch of water provided by Palm Springs Fire Department firefighting units, more than 320 people cheered, most of them with cameras. Well, all good things must come to an end, and for an aircraft that had been in service for some time, 
it was time to put it to rest and allow the young kids out to play, which leads us to the Growler. The EA-18G, like the Prowler, was based on an existing aircraft, the FA-18EF Super Hornet. However, the EA-6B lacks many of the capabilities of the A6. The Growler has many of the Super Hornet's attributes. The EA-18G Growler is powered by two F414GE400 engines that provide 22,000 pounds of torque. The plane can reach a top speed of 1,960 kilometers an hour and a maximum height of 50,000 feet. When equipped with external fuel tanks, it has a range of 1,570 kilometers. Despite the fact that this aircraft has been decommissioned, it has seen several conflicts and was instrumental in the capture of Osama bin Laden. Sure, the SEALs had a top secret helicopter developed especially for them to help them slip into Pakistan. An EA-6B Prowler, on the other hand, ensured that the region surrounding Osama bin Laden's compound was devoid of any annoying radar or electronic signals that could have given the operation away. But what were your thoughts on this incredible beat? And do you believe the Growler would be able to keep up with the Prowler's rich history? Let us know what you think in the comments down below.